Hi guys, Patrick here, giving you another episode for the Stack Q series. Today we're going to see why and when you should go back to 9x9. Nine nine. And uh, here we go. It's going to be a pretty short episode because you already know, I expect you at least, you already know to play 9x9 nine nine and there is no secret to it. You just have to play it. But why should you and when? If your game has problems realizing the way you should attack, so the direction of playing an attack, and um, if your game have a problem in the end game, then you probably want to go back to 9x9, nine nine because it helps you see the board in terms of points. What are you, the move you're going to play worth in terms of points? Once you, once you understand that you're going to leave in a local position, you need to start thinking in terms of points. Okay? Um, and it's, it's actually not that easy, even for down-level players, to not answer a move that looks center locally because it would give too many points. So you have to play somewhere else and see those two moves as PI for points. So it's important to understand these sort of exchanges. And uh, 9 by 9 can help you in that. <clears throat> Why can it help you in that? Because if we play a game in 9 by 9 something like this, okay? And then black would play something like this. Would you consider answering this move? Or would you consider trying and take the similar move somewhere else, which is bigger? Okay, let's let's make it simpler. If black plays here, you're not going to answer from the corner, even though black has a follow-up against it, because he cannot touch a c8. But you aren't going to give him that, because then he gets this too. Okay, so if you want to play in the local position, you want to be able to see me eye for points. You play there, and I should play in the other big point, which is probably something like this. I'm not saying this is perfect play by anybody, by the way. But what I'm trying to let you understand is that in a 9x9, nine nine, it becomes more natural to play moves in terms of mi for points, rather than in terms of sente and gote. And uh, um, having a good eye for points it's, uh, can, can be critical in many, many positions, because it's uh, easy to fall uh, into that uh, puppy girl mentality when uh, where you answer a move just because it looks sente, even though there are bigger moves on the board that are even more sente. So a move is sente only as long as there are no, mo no moves somewhere else that are more sente than that. Okay? So... Um, the distinction between locally sente and uh, really sente can be improved by playing 9x9. The distinction between big points, me eye for points, and it helps you understanding really well what does the proverb mean when it says in the opening the big moves are really big and they are bigger than vague attacks. Okay? And that applies not just in the openings, if there are very big moves. And a move is sent locally, but it's not that severe, then probably a bigger move can, can be a good choice. So, a special note about smaller boards that are not 9x9. Nine nine. I'm thinking 9x9 nine nine because it's the most common. You could also maybe try a 5x5, five, five five, although 5x5, five five, white dies. 5x5, five five, white cannot make a living group if black plays Tengen. But you could also use a, a move like a 5x5 five five board. If you have no Tsumegos and you have a computer playing go, a strong one, you can play him a 5x5 five five and try to leave or try to kill, because you aren't supposed to leave as white, and you are supposed to kill everything as black. So... Yeah, that's about it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it all. Um, I hope some of you will actually go back to nine by nine because, as 
um, basic as it may seem, um, and nine by nine, uh, not playing nine by nine is what got me through the through the one k, two k area and into the down levels when I was there at the first time. So I hope it will help some of you guys as well. See ya.